Well, hey everybody, welcome to Skincare with Chris Gibson. If you're unfamiliar with me, I'm a skincare expert and I'm here to help you find skincare products that will work for you, not empty your wallet, and not do more harm than good. So if that's your thing, please hit that subscription button and that little notification bell so that you know when my new videos are up each week. Okay, so today I have a new reaction video for none other than Hiram Yarbrough and his morning skincare routine. Now, if you don't know who Hiram is, and I expect many of you do, he is the newest skincare superstar on YouTube and TikTok with over 3.5 million followers. I know on YouTube and it just grows every day on TikTok, so it's probably like 5 million. It's a ridiculous amount of people. And I'm so excited to be doing this because Hiram has managed to bring skincare to so many people, especially younger people. And I think that is absolutely amazing because it's not talked about enough and people don't start their routines soon enough. Hiram has made skincare fun and entertaining. And yes, he is really super entertaining. And I know from my own success back in the day with my own books on acne when I was doing TV because I'm old and that was before YouTube, I know what it feels like to take something that you absolutely love and help people with and know that you can reach that many people and help them out. It's just an amazing feeling. So kudos to Hiram. Now, quick funny story about Hiram and how I actually met him before his channel blew up was I was helping a mutual friend of ours on Facebook with a skincare question. I didn't even know who Hiram was and I think his channel was just like seven or eight, nine, some 10,000, I think somewhere in there, which is not bad. And he saw that and he reached out and said hello and said, hey, another guy with a skincare channel on YouTube, I'm subscribing. So he subscribed to my channel and I was teensy weensy. I probably had maybe a few thousand followers or subscribers. So I was just really getting my feet wet at the time. So it's been exciting to watch him blow up. And I think it's amazing that he's able to bring skincare to that many people, especially the under 30 crowd. Awesome stuff. So that said, I'm really excited to be taking a look at his skincare routine that he does in the morning. So if you see this video, Hiram, which I'm probably sure you won't because you're super busy, hello again. <laughs> and I wanna point out that these reaction videos are meant to be fun and entertaining and educational because everyone has something to offer. And I would never ever criticize another person's skincare choices because everybody's skin is so different and we all come to the conclusions we do about what we need based on our experience. So there's something to learn from everyone, even though a lot of the influencers, including me, don't always agree on exactly everything. For the most part, the important message here is to take care of your skin so it will take care of you. Okay, so let's take a look at what Hiram is doing for his morning skincare routine. And he also includes some tips on what he's doing with his hair care, which I don't really talk enough about on this channel. And I promise you all, I will get better about that. But let's take a look and see what he has to say. Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare. We know who he is. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. <laughs> welcome to my morning skincare routine. Yes, I haven't done one of these nine months, a year, a year and a half, who knows, honestly. I don't keep track of that shit. You may also notice that we are in a different location. I'm currently in my bathroom. I have gotten a different bathroom since my Harper's Bazaar video. Well, I haven't gotten a different bathroom, I moved. <laughs> and the bathroom is much more spacious and definitely more friendly for filming as opposed to my um, Harry Potter den size bathroom that I used to have. And I thought I'd finally share my morning skincare routine. Ever since I did the Harper's Bazaar video, you guys have been requesting a morning skincare routine like crazy because you know, my nighttime is when I splurge a little bit more and you guys were really shook by like how many products I was going in with, which yes, I will say I use more products at night than I do during the day, which is why today's video is going to be like a little bit more boring, a little bit shorter, but don't worry, I'll keep it fun. I'll keep it hip. That where the kids are saying these days? What do I mean the kids? I am the kids. So a normal person would have led you through like their entire morning routine, but honestly, I knew I was filming this video yesterday, yet I still got up, I still showered, cleansed my face and did my hair before realizing, oh shit, Hiram, probably should have done that in the video. But that's okay, I spared you the horror of seeing what I look like when my hair is not done. So I'll just kind of lead you through my steps up until this point where I look like, yeah, like this. First thing is I take a shower, you know, something. We all should do. What am I saying? <laughs> I like to use, I have been loving using um, this shampoo and this conditioner, the Scene, the Scene Skin Caring Shampoo and Scene, 
skin caring conditioner. Oh man, that's difficult to say. I really like the philosophy of this company because they make hair care products that are friendly for the skin as well. Because one thing I'm always nervous about is using like hair products that will run down onto my face and clog my pores or increase sensitivity or irritation or just lead to skin problems. And I believe these are made by dermatologists. Yeah, they're made by dermatologists. Okay, this is a really great point. One that I try to emphasize with you guys and one I'm very aware of for myself. He's talking about using hair products that don't irritate the skin. And a lot of times, so a lot of times hair care products like that can run down on the skin. And if you don't dab them off or make sure you cleanse them off, they can block your pores. So you need to use a product that is friendly to your skin, like he's talking about here, or you need to make sure that you use a cloth and very gently clean that area of skin. The best thing to do is to lean your head back in the shower and make sure any hair care products are rinsed behind you and not forward onto your face. You would be surprised at how many times people get breakouts and we try everything and then we find out their conditioner and shampoo is what's causing the problem. So really, really great point. so that you won't have to worry about any of that stuff for the skin. And I've been really liking their products so far. So I first go in with those, and then I am the type of person who likes to cleanse in the shower, cleanse my face that is. And I know maybe that's not the most popular thing because a lot of people say that it can increase trans epidermal water loss if you cleanse your face in the shower. But I only think that's true if you shower in really hot water, which you really shouldn't be showering in hot water in general because it strips the hydration of the body and your face. Right, no hot water, no super hot water. Shower in hot water at all so that the color lasts as long as possible because I don't want to lose this purple and have to retouch it because I'm lazy. You can see that by the fading color. <laughs> in my opinion, if you shower in like lukewarm water, what I would naturally be exposing to my face to when cleansing over a sink anyway, it doesn't increase trans epidermal water loss. So that's just my own opinion if we want to get technical. I'm using the Holly Frog Superior Omega Nutritive Gel Wash. Cosmetic companies love to make their skincare product names really long, which, you know, I'm not complaining, it's just hard to say on oh. Oh my God, I had to stop here because this is something that I actually bitch about in so many of my videos when they make these names for your skincare products so super long. And when you're doing a YouTube video, you have to try to remember all of that stuff. They're like cramming all of the ingredients and all the benefits into the name of the skincare product, which is totally unnecessary. So I kind of have to laugh here because it's nice to hear him bitch about the same thing. I really like Holly Frog cleansers. I feel like they incorporate and utilize a lot of really beneficial and good ingredients in a cleanser. And for me, I consider cleansing to be one of the harshest steps of a skincare routine. So I'm all about finding like gentle, but effective cleansers. And this one's really nice because it like suds up a little bit, but it has really good ingredients, like a ton of antioxidant rich and hydrating oils, as well as gentle surfactants to not overly strip the skin. And it's fragrance free. And if I'm not mistaken, all their cleansers are fragrance free, which is, you know, Really cool. Fragrance free. Cleansers do have That's fragrance. good. And I'm okay with fragrance and cleansers, but you know, it's an extra bonus. So I use that in the shower. I get out of the shower and then for my hair, I've been blow drying my hair recently just because it takes freaking forever for it to air dry. Like literally, if I don't child dry my hair, it'll take a few hours for it to like completely dry out. So yeah, I'm just not in the mood to do that. And I asked my barber if he had recommendations for like a heat protectant product because I don't know hair products very well. And he recommended this really fancy one. I don't know if I'm gonna get this again because it's super fancy and super fragranced, but it's the Kerastase Resistance, um, what is it? Resurfacing Strengthening Milk. But it's actually been really good. It's been softening my hair. Just make sure I don't f it up because especially when your hair is colored, it gets really dehydrated and sometimes damaged. And I don't wanna contribute to that with the blow dryer. And then after I use the Ruzel Pomade mixed with the X Mondo BDSM, I love this one because it has like a little bit of like a uh, blue and purple iridescent that really gives like an extra boost to my hair. And I like this one because it really like hydrates and nourishes the hair because a lot of like styling and holding products can just be like glue on the head. And I want something a little bit more nourishing. Anyway, we're past the boring stuff. Now onto the skincare, the exciting stuff. Skincare, so skincare, skincare. yes. Redness serum from Ren. Now Ren is one of those brands that for so many reasons, I really like, like. do I have an Australian accent now? I really like a lot of their like, um, brand philosophies and commitment to sustainability. Some of their products do have fragrance, which is unfortunate, but I've talked about like how much I've liked their sunscreen in the past, their mineral sunscreen. And this one is a serum specifically focused on helping to soothe the skin after like sun damage and irritation, which I really like because it's summer right now. So the sun is like 
extra, extra strong. And the ingredients of this are super impressive as well. Like it has phospholipids, algae extract, a bunch of hydrating and soothing oils, arnica extract, milk protein. The only thing I don't like about it is that it does have bitter orange flower extract along with lima wool. So it does have like a tiny bit of a fragrance. But when it comes to flower waters, I'm more forgiving because there's such a small, tiny, tiny percentage. And lima wool is the only fragrant component. So I'm okay with this one because again, Okay, this is another great point. He's using an anti-redness serum, which is an essence-based serum. It's got a lot of proteins. It's got milk protein in there to help with redness and soothing the skin. And he's absolutely right. He lives in a tropical climate, so do I. And I can tell you that this little bit of extra protection and soothing right off the bat is a really great thing to do, especially when you get a lot of sun. And even in Florida, no matter what you do, you get sun. It doesn't matter if your SPF is 50. So I'm sure it's exactly the same in Hawaii. So really glad to see that he's using some sort of anti-redness. I can also tell you that niacinamide will also do a similar thing. If you mix a little bit of niacinamide with one of your other serums, it will work very, very well, as long as it's not an oil-based serum. If you're using the powdered niacinamide, the 100% like from the ordinary, that has to be mixed in a water-based serum. And this is a water-based serum from what I can see. So really, really a great, great first step for your routine during the day. The ingredients are bomb. And this one's also really like nourishing and hydrating, but it doesn't make the skin greasy, which is really nice because most anti-redness products, it's so frustrating. They tend to be crazy hydrating because they automatically assume that the person using it has really dry skin. But for oily people like me who have fair skin in the sun, I'm just like, help. And this is a good one for that. I like how it feels. Then next I like to go in with my eye cream. I, <laughs> I mean, you guys aren't gonna be surprised to see this eye cream. The First Aid Beauty Niacinamide Eye Cream. This one is just, yeah. I just have not been able to stop using this one because obviously the niacinamide and the fragrance-free formula, but because of like the slight corrective tint it has to it, it's so nice. I sometimes use it a little bit. Okay, this is another, so far three out of three, right? Another great tip. He's using an eye cream and I try to stress this with everyone. I think eye creams are really important. The skin around your eyes is very thin and it tends to be very dry. The reason for that is we don't have a lot of oil glands in place on our eyelids and around our eyes. It's one of the reasons the eye area tends to wrinkle and age faster than other areas. So using an eye cream like the one he's using that's an niacinamide and even a little tint in it is gonna help cover dark circles. But more importantly, it's gonna help hydrate the eye area all day long and it needs to go on before other products. So really great tip here because we don't talk about eye creams enough. On my nose just to like offset the extra redness on my nose but I'll usually just use it on the eye area gently pat and it just like you can see it doesn't like change the coloring at all but it just gives it a little bit of correction maybe you guys can't see it <laughs> I feel like I can see it and that makes me happy so tap 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 booty booty slap <laughs> I particularly like to use niacinamide on my under eye area because it helps to correct the darkness and your boy has not been getting a lot of sleep lately 1-800 stressed as fuck. Oh, by the way, oh my gosh, if you guys haven't tried Emma Chamberlain's coffee company, Chamberlain Coffee, the caffeine content of her coffee is insane. <laughs> I love it because I'm always struggling to find like good coffee that tastes good, but even more so provides like a lot of caffeine. And I've always been someone who for the longest time was like, you know what, I'm not gonna drink coffee every day because I don't wanna get addicted. That's just not what I wanna do. <laughs> but being a YouTuber, I think it's it just comes with the job. You have to be up all hours of the night. Some nights you have to be up until 4 or 5 a.m. And then other nights not you kidding. Have to be up not super kidding at all. Morning. And my schedule's just all over the place. So I've just accepted it as a necessary job expense. So it's hard to find coffee that gives me like. So that's energy. where he gets all that energy. She's coffee. Like, for coffee. Like when I use it for cold brew, ooh, that shit is strong. It tastes so good. I've always said an eye cream isn't necessary to a routine because most eye creams are just like crazy expensive. But when they have a particular benefit, like for example, really good ingredients or kind of a slight corrective ability or both like this eye cream, I'm definitely on board. And I've been using this every day for months. Months, I tell you. Afterwards, we go in with a moisturizer and I've been using this one lately because it's summertime. And Such it a good, so good. Use of two so different good. moisturizers. The coconut water cream from First Aid Beauty. I have talked so much about this one because it is the only moisturizer I've ever found. Well, no. The other one I'm going to be using is honestly pretty good competition. <laughs> but in the past, this was the only one I found to like not make my skin super greasy during the summer because I used to work jobs where I was like running around all day. It was just craziness. The heat and humidity here in Hawaii just made me sweat 
buckets. I couldn't find a moisturizer that was lightweight enough for me to not sweat through, but this was the only one that I found. And recently I've been trying a bunch of new moisturizers and I'm like, no, you know. They're okay, so it's really important to point out here as well. He's using coconut water product, which is perfectly fine. Coconut water is very soothing to the skin. It's great, it's easily absorbed, and it's very hydrating. It's a really, really wonderful skincare ingredient. The issue is that a lot of times people get it confused with coconut oil. So you have to really check your skincare products out, especially moisturizers that claim that they have coconut as one of the ingredients to make sure it's the water and not the oil because the oil is very comedogenic and will block pores. I know I get a lot of grief on my coconut video on the channel because I talk about that and there are people that swear by it, it doesn't bother them. For the vast majority of people, coconut oil can be a poor blocking ingredient. So be sure and check your labels. They're all too greasy for me just because it's too hot right now. And so I went back to this one, my tried and true. Don't forget the neck. I know they say not to drag down on your neck, but every time I drag upwards, it really irritates like my hair follicles and makes my skin super red. Pat, and then the pat, other moisturizer I've been using pat, from not up or down, on just pat it on. As well as this one is the Rovectin Clean Lotus Water Cream. I've been mentioning this in a bunch of videos because it operates very similarly to this one, but it has a crazy high concentration of lotus extract. It's actually like the first ingredient, and lotus is one of those ingredients that's usually like not very cheap and hard to find. I don't know. <laughs> and um, and I've typically been using this all over my face, but now that I'm in the coconut water cream mood, I use this on my dry cheek area and my neck. And this one's super nice because it's a crazy lightweight water cream gel, like one of the most lightweight but still hydrating creams I've found out there. And then we have sunscreen, the most important part. Of sunscreen. I my horizons as well. And try I wouldn't expect any loss. SPF 50 sunscreen. Now I got this one on a whim. After I got it, I realized that it does have one fragrant essential oil. I think it's bergamot. I'm not sure. And I was like, bergamot. Seriously. But I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it out and see. It primarily uses zinc oxide, which is, you know, my favorite sunscreen ingredient. It doesn't leave a crazy severe white cast, which I like. I'd say it's about a two. It is an SPF 50, which, you know, is- Okay, I like the product he's talking about. It's a zinc-based sunscreen, which I highly recommend mineral sunscreens, but he's also right. Sometimes it give a white cast to the skin, especially the higher you go up in SPF. So he's found a product that doesn't do that or doesn't do it as much, that's really great. Some of the sunscreens have a tint added to kind of offset that. Nobody wants to look like Mark Zuckerberg. If you saw that picture of him with the sunscreen on, white, terrible, terrible looking. So mineral sunscreens, absolutely recommend them, much more so than chemically based. Those of you who follow me know how much I detest chemical sunscreen. So that said, let's keep going. Like I said, during the summer, sunscreens typically tend to be really heavy on the skin. You can see I use Quite, quite a bit. Sunscreen is one of those steps I don't like to skimp out on. And then we use a product I've really been liking recently. It's the Dermablend Multi-Use Liquid Pigments. Now, this one's kind of like makeup. It's basically makeup, but the reason I love it is because you can add like a tiny drop to your sunscreen to offset the white See, cast. adding tint to so sunscreen. Cool, I've been looking for a product like this for so long because sometimes the white cast of sunscreens and I'm just not in the mood for. And I was always skeptical with a lot of makeup products because I didn't want them to disrupt the sunscreen ability because you really want to be careful when it comes to sunscreen, but they've done clinical tests on this one and found that not only does it not affect the sunscreen protection, it also, um, what's the word? Oh, it enhances it, it makes it better. So I just add like a tiny bit and mix it in because the coverage of this one, honey, is strong. And you can see it adds like a little bit of a pigment and then I just work it into the skin. And I make sure to take my time for this step because I want to ensure I'm getting the most protection possible. Let's see if he does his ears and neck. I also like neck. to do this method of putting it on the hand and then on the face just to make sure that I can like not over build it up in certain areas and really evenly apply it. It might seem extra that I'm going to all these measures, but it's sunscreen. Like I said, you don't want to mess around. I always want to remember the ears. Hey, and, um, you remember the ears. Very good. Settles. Very good. White cast lessens a lot, and it actually looks very, very natural. And I also apply to the back of my neck. Yes, got the neck too. Back of the neck. Ears. And I after doing this, and this is what I like about a sunscreen. It's not super shiny. Like considering that there's a ring light right in front of me, I actually look, you know, pretty matte. 
Wow, okay, I look so weird. I got new ring lights. I don't know, I never look like this. I always use the sunscreen every day when I film and I never look this pale. I'm like looking at the bathroom mirror and I'm like, I look normal. And then I look at here and I'm like, I look pale as fuck. What's going on? And I've also noticed when it comes to mineral sunscreens, you just give it like a good 20 minutes. And for some reason the pigment kind of dies down. I don't know what that is, but it just looks more natural after that amount of time. If you understand science, comment below because I still don't understand that connection. And that's my morning skincare routine. Okay, so I'm glad he's a basic ass YouTuber. He's very, very, very energetic and very, very good with skincare. So I was really excited to do this. Thank you guys for asking me to do this uh, reaction video. You know, I don't do them very often because they are really, really hard to edit, but Hey guys, I just had to add this outtake. I usually don't do this, but this video has been insane to film. So insane, I had to add this. First of all, when you do a reaction video, you really have to pay attention. So there's a lot going on. I have to start and stop the video. I'm filming Hiram's video on my screen while I'm talking to you so that it all matches up. And there are a lot of things going on. At the same time, someone decides in the hallway of our condos to build a house. I hope you didn't hear that. I tried to take it out of the video, but there's that. Then the dogs, of course, are barking at that. And I swear to God, as I'm wrapping up the video, there's like a huge car accident right outside our building. So really crazy, crazy stuff. So anyway, just had to add that. But this was worth it. It was a lot of fun. And I think, again, we learned something and Hiram really does seem to walk his talk. And to me, that's everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay beautiful. I love you. And I'll see you guys over on the next video.